Hi, I'm Dewey Thompson, and welcome, or welcome back, to our panel series on managing creatives. Our two panelists have high-level experience both in television and corporate production. Anita Allison was at Sundance Channel and then at Bain & Company's global video department, while Scott Williams was at HBO and CBS Cable before overseeing creative at Starwood Hotels and other hospitality brands. I'm really excited to share their thoughts about best practices in corporate video. So let's start. Anita, Scott, thank you for joining me today. Let's start at the beginning, which is basically hiring talent. But what do you guys look for when you are looking to hire creative talent? And how do you frame the job that you're offering knowing that there might be this contradiction between creative talent and the corporate environment that they're going to work in. Anita? Well, first, let me say thanks for inviting me, Dewey. This is really fun. Um, so when we look for talent, uh, what we tend to do is really spread the net wide. And um, so, you know, do all the regular things, put on LinkedIn, Glassdoor, all, all, everything like that. And then also go to our vendor pool and ask them if they know anybody who is looking for a gig. Um, we, generally speaking, don't have a lot of issues getting people to apply for jobs. Um, so, you know, the benefit of being in corporate is that it is really steady and um, and there's a lot of security. Um, the benefits are usually better than in television or film. Um, it's not a freelance gig, so people, you know, they get vacation time and um, and you know, a whole benefits package that can be helpful for their families. So we don't, generally speaking, we don't have issues getting talent in the door with the exception of animators. Animators are a bit more difficult to get in, like really good animators are a bit more difficult to find and, and bring in the door, at least that's been my experience. Um, and then when we get them in or, you know, when we interview them, just make it really clear that, you know, we're, we're genuinely interested in their professional development. Scott, what, what do you think about when hiring creative? The biggest hurdle is to make sure that that talent is going to fit in, is coachable, is developable. And as Anita said, you know, development path is critical. I'm going to go back to my hospitality experience, which is always that the first and last impression are always the most important. So do the onboarding really, really well. Make sure that that person who you've spent an enormous amount of time and energy recruiting and then hiring um, feels like the rock star that they deserve from day one. So meet them on the outside of the building at a coffee shop, walk them into the building, make them feel like truly remarkable, have their technology ready to go, have their email ready to go. Don't make any of those juvenile mistakes that so many corporations make because that's your first impression. And then that, you know, I'm not to saying the last impression, meaning you're firing them, but the, you know, the let's just call it the lasting impression. You know, every seven to 10 days, make sure that there's a a stake in the ground around development or communication. It's really simple, but so many people don't do it. And most importantly, discuss that shared vision for the role as the vision that they have and you have for the role then aligns with the corporate strategy. Anita, how about you? What, what kinds of things, what tools do you use to, or what kind of programs do you have in place to develop talent? Um, yeah. So. I, on my teams, we um, have weekly professional development um, chats um, with the supervisor and whoever the, the creative is. Um, so they're usually about a half an hour every week. And it's a check-in about, you know, where you are professionally, making sure that you're heading in the right direction, you know, heading off problems um, as they come in. Um, so that, you know, we're not waiting a month or a quarter in order to deal with issues that, that a person may be having, whether that's, you know, their personal life crashing in and affecting their work or whether that's, you know, 
not being able to understand a note or whatever it is, you know, just having that regular communication, like Scott said. And um, we also uh, do goals every year. So um, at the beginning of the year, you know, we'll sit down for a couple of hours and talk to each person about, you know, this is the goals of the marketing department. This is the goals of the firm. Um, this is, you know, my vision for how we're going to reach these goals. Where do you see yourself in this? What What's exciting to you? Um, from what I see and what you see, what looks exciting to you? What do you want to do, you know? And, um, and that can be really helpful for people. So, you know, if we know that we're going to go into podcasting or if we know that we have a major, you know, major campaigns coming up, um, we can start offering opportunities to people when we see them come in, um, you know, with live streaming coming about, you know, who wants to take the reins and understand how this works technically. Um, and that's really exciting for some people and really terrifying for other people. So, you know, we, I really try to make sure that um, people understand the opportunities and we're not shoving the opportunities at them, but we're like, okay, here's the cool stuff, you know, <laughs> on top of everything else we do, here's some cool stuff that's coming in. Uh, who wants to tackle it, you know? I think the single best uh, development tool was the basic ongoing communication, making sure that they felt that they had a safe environment, uh, that it was as secure a place as possible, that they were king and queens of creativity in the organization, that we had truly built a, a best in class or one of a kind, certainly in the hotel business, that it was a innovation center. Uh, but individual development is, where do you want to be in 20 years? Let me help you get there. Can you name a couple of people as examples and I'll sit with you and craft your development plan with you. And I sent a couple of people to Harvard programs. Uh, they used to have one that was affiliated with AIGA and that was an incentive to keep people around. It was a week long program. Um, and just treating people with kindness and respect and manners. Okay. Well, treating people with kindness, respect, and manners seems like a wonderful way to end this part of our panel discussion. Thank you, Scott and Anita, for that really interesting conversation about the best practices that you guys are encountering in hiring, retaining, and developing corporate video talent. I think for me, who has been either freelance or owned my own shop for my whole career, what was really eye-opening was how Anita and Scott described the powerful benefit of career development for creatives who decide to work in a corporation. Having mentors help shape the trajectory of your career is really one of the most valuable things I think a company can offer and something that this audience should really think about as you bring on creative staff. So stay tuned for more from this illustrious panel and thanks for watching.